Good evening and welcome to the December 10th, 2013 meeting of the Zoning Design and Review Board. Just a reminder for anyone, we do have agendas um, at the entrance. And please uh, turn off your cell phones and pagers. I always like to say that. Um, if you have them. And we are not live, which you'll know when you go to watch this, but we do put this back onto the Town of Yontville website uh, within a week of the meeting. Is that correct? Um, it depends how quickly the Granicus um, group good. is able to post it. But it will be posted on mm -hmm. the uh, town. Mm -hmm. Very good. So we'll call this meeting to order and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, can we do that now? Here. Mm -hmm. We've never done that. No, have no. We? Uh, everyone else does it. Yes, we do. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do that. They do that at the town council meetings, and they the do it at the meeting. parks and the arts. So they're very good. So uh, next, we'll move to adopt the agenda. Any changes or any um, comments on the agenda? Anybody make a motion to adopt the agenda? I'll make a motion and I'll a second. I'll second it. Thank you, Commissioner Scoggins and Commissioner Cook. Uh, approval of minutes, which there are none. So we seen, I'm assuming, the Woodson project in front of us. No public comment. We'll move on to the consent calendar, which there are no items as well. So we are straight to 7.1 for the design review of the Woodson residence. And we shall start with uh, Sandra. Let's stand. Okay. Good evening. Tonight you have before you design review for the Woodson residence at 2008 Humboldt Street. And the parcel is a, just over a 5,000 square foot vacant lot um, on the north side of the street, and it's one of four vacant parcels on that, um, in that area. And after completion of the proposed home that's before you, there would be one vacant lot to the east that will serve as open space both for this residence and the existing residence at 2004 Humboldt. The applicant proposes a 1,249 square foot one-story single-family home, a 200-square-foot detached one-car garage with an attached 100-square-foot storage area. And the design of the home will be um, a cottage style in with board and batten um, siding. And the colors that are shown here on this material board, which is probably truer than what was in your packet, um, the two colors are poppy seed and falling snow. Um, and we can pass this around. It also shows um, a stain of the front door and all the decking. Um, so the design also includes divided light casement windows on all of the elevations and uh, French doors um, on the front, east, and rear elevations to access each of the decks, and a stone fireplace that's made of locally um, derived stone but is a veneer that would be applied to the fireplaces proposed for the east elevation. The roof is a gable roof with a 6 and 12 pitch um, with dark composition shingle roofing, and the structure would be 19 feet in height. There are large porches proposed for the front, east, and north elevations, and these are noted in more detail um, in, in the staff report. Um, the structure itself will be set back approximately 19 to 22 feet, depending on the two portions of the building that face the street. The front setback, five feet from the um, west side and 15 feet from the east side, and a full 35 feet to the rear property line. And these are spelled out more in the table that on, starts on page two. Um, there's a one-car detached garage proposed for the northeast corner of the property. Um, and this structure has been designed to match um, the main residence. Um, access to the garage will be via a 10-foot wide driveway, and its surface will be composed of alternating segments of decomposed granite and turf paver. The driveway presents an option for tandem parking of a second um, parking space on the property. Um, existing um, vegetation includes includes three ornamental pear trees that are tightly grouped along the property frontage, um, as they are for each of the vacant lots. 
and nine existing fruit trees that are more centrally located on the parcel. Um, and these trees are all slated for removal. The only trees that will remain are an existing olive at the northwest corner of the property and an existing fruit tree at the northwest corner of the proposed residence. Um, a proposed landscape plan has been submitted and you have the drawing as well as um, information on each of those plants with photos. Um, they include English lavender, hydrangea, um, and roses and different types of vines to be planted between the paver joints and the stepping stones. And many of the proposed plants um, are drought tolerant. Um, so as I've noted in the staff report, the proposed residence complies with many of the design ordinance standards um, for residences, including setbacks and plate and building height, FAR, um, those that apply to accessory structures, fence height and location, and exterior finished materials. And as you know, the Old Town Historic Zoning District has additional design guidelines. These are in the form of guidelines rather than strict requirements in most cases. Um, and each of these are individually called out in the staff report and the um, residence is in general compliance with it. I will note um, just a couple of things. Um, one are that the door the windows do not strictly meet the preference for one and a half to one um, height to width ratio, but we find that they're very proportional to the elevations that they're on, and so um, staff is really supportive of what was submitted. Um, the other item is the board and batten siding um, that is proposed. That's in place of the more typical um, boards, individual boards with batten, um, and the applicant is proposing that Douglas fir plywood be used. Um, which could be a good material if high quality sheets of plywood are selected. It can be um, a rougher grain and have knots and there are higher qualities of um, plywood that I've noted in the staff report. Baltic birch is one of them. Um, we are encouraging the applicant to, to use this but I haven't gone um, to the extent of requiring it as a condition of approval. Um, the main issue I would say um, is the parking for this property. Um, and the requirement for a single family um, residential use is one covered and one screen parking space. Um, and these must be independently accessible and tandem stalls are only approved with a use permit. And in this case, the applicant proposes one covered space in the garage and one um, open space at the northeast corner of the property, oh, I'm sorry, at the southwest corner of the property. And while both of these are independently accessible, staff does not support the location of the uncovered space um, at the property frontage. And there are, pro there are several problems with um, this space. One is that it results in the loss of an additional on-street parking space because of the driveway cut that's needed. And parking is impo important on both sides of the street. Um, here in, on Humboldt, where we see a residential neighborhood transition to the commercial district, um, and a parking is needed and, um, and is needed. Um, additionally, the space is located within the front yard setback, and that is not a favored location. The Old Town District has special guidelines for locating um, parking, um, both garages and open parking, um, on the rear half of the lot. And it's unscreened from the right of way. Um, and would result in the replacement of what should be landscaping and open space in the front yard. Um, so we believe there's merit in approving um, a tandem space configuration for this property. It is a narrow, long parcel that makes it um, a challenge and difficult to put the parking on the rear of the garage, especially if these are to be um, in a parking space because it puts the parking um, really in the, in the, in the the applicant's private backyard. And while there may be room to reconfigure and rotate the garage to accommodate two spaces that are independently accessible in the back, we don't really believe this is the intent um, of the code. And um, when you have a long driveway, as we do in this case, over 70 feet long, and there's opportunity for multiple cars to park, um, when it's a single family, um, use rather than an apartment or something of that nature. Um, 
tandem parking can work very well. And so we are supportive and we are recommending approval of the configuration. Um, I'll mention that there, the code provides that in reviewing requests for tandem parking use permits, consideration should be given to the lot configuration. Here we have a narrow long lot that can um, accommodate the parking um, that um, in locating all parking beyond the front setback, which is achieved with the tandem parking, um, and minimizing impacts on adjoining property, which in this case would be visual impacts of parking a car um, in the front um, yard and then the loss of the on-street parking. So we've made the use permit findings in the staff report and believe those um, can be affirmatively made. We've also made the design review find line, findings and the true removal findings, and so we are recommending um, design review for the residents and use permit approval for the tandem parking space. Oh, and let me mention one last thing. At each of your seats, I put a revised um, conditions of approval, and it just includes one new condition of approval that I'd inadvertently um, omitted, and that's that the applicant shall pay all the impact fees, which is a requirement for the development of the parcel, regardless of, it, of whether it's a condition or not. Thank you, Sandra. <clears throat> Are there any questions of staff from any of the commissioners? Mm, not me, no. Uh -uh. I just want to be perfectly clear on this, this driveway. I'm looking at the, uh, we're talking about this thing right here, right? Mm -hmm. the entire yeah. back. And then that's the uh, the um, pull-in parking spot right there. Ah, okay. Okay. Perfect. And then, yeah. so um, you, you mentioned the windows, you mentioned the wood. Um, in the report, you mentioned the pitch of the roof, but you didn't mention anything about it now. Is that not a good, you said it exceeded the minimum? Um, right, so it meets the standard, and um, so we have oh, no issue it's with the it. opposite of what I was thinking by okay. exceeding the minimum. And thank you, <laughs> very good. And one other mistake I made: uh, we're all here, but Commissioner uh, Jaynes has been excused for the evening. I forgot to do roll call, so thank you Correct, very much. Thank you. Um, very good. Now, with me picking up uh, my loose ends, we shall now open it up to the applicant. If you want to step up to the microphone and tell thank us you. who you are. <clears throat> Uh, thank you for uh, hearing our uh, design on our building today. Um, my name is uh, Rich Woodson, and uh, I'm here with my wife, Kara Woodson. Uh, we are um, going to be the residents of uh, this parcel. And uh, so I'm the son of uh, Carolyn and Dick Woodson, who've uh, been a resident of Yauntville, I think, since uh, 1988. Um, I was resident of Yauntville from about 1988 till about 1994, then I left and uh, coming back now to um, hopefully uh, care for my parents as they age and to raise our daughter in this home uh, that my parents have been kind enough to give us the lot for use of. We'll be financing the uh, construction of the home on this lot. Um, the uh, We believe um, that this was the, uh, well, we're actually uh, really pleased with uh, the tremendous efforts of our architect to uh, build a home that we feel complies with the uh, requirements of the design uh, for the town of Yachtville and also permits us to, um, you know, raise a child in, in this, within those restrictions in, in that amount of space. Um, the uh, intent for use of the property is um, for us to live there and uh, be multi-generational um, multi uh, families of Yauntvillians, actually, um, in, in that parcel. So um, also we believe the design, um, uh, we're very pleased with uh, how it fits in with the agricultural, um, the fact that it, it's within an ag agricultural preserve. Um, that's how we uh, selected the board and batten finish and uh, a lot of our inspiration um, for the design of the home. So um, thank you for reviewing this and um, we uh, hope to gain your approval. Do you have any questions for me? Thank you. Commissioner Cook? 
Um, no questions other than I agree. I think your architect did a beautiful job of meeting the guidelines. Thank you. Commissioner Laz, any questions? No? No questions. Thank you. So, I've got one. Though. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's right. I don't have any questions. Um, so you have no problem with the tandem parking and just the landscaping to the left then? No, uh, we prefer it. Um, we were, our architect put that in to conform with the requirement that Sandy mentioned for the two spots, but as you can see, um, tandem parking in all practicality is how we'll be using the lot on a daily basis. It's how my parents use their driveway. It's how we intend to use our driveway. And with the amount of traffic on there, that's what will end up happening. I work in uh, the Bay Area. Um, so I get up very early and uh, leave. And then your car will be free to move in and out during the day. Kara um, is a homemaker, so she'll be at home <coughs> during the day. And um, then when I return, um, there will be probably no need for her to utilize her car. Very good. And then uh, the other comment about the siding and the wood, is yeah. there any concern with? Uh... Yeah. Well, like I said, we intend to live in this house. Uh, this isn't like a flip or something. So we want the highest quality materials within you know, the budget that we can afford uh, for construction. So I'm not aware of all the. Um, pros and cons of the different materials at this point, but what I'll be seeking to achieve is the strongest, most beautiful materials for the price per square foot. Um, so if Douglas fir turns out to be cheap and not that, uh, ha have great longevity, then I'll opt for some things better. Very good, thank you very much. Um, one, so just to be clear, the, the secondary parking spot off to the side isn't something you feel you actually need? No. And want to fight for? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Woods. Thank you. So with that, we'll close the uh, public hearing and uh, see if, you, if the commissioners have any questions or concerns about this. No, I was going to argue in favor that of the side parking spot because I think tandem is difficult to use um, and that parking on the street isn't the problem of you know, the homeowners, when the visitors, visitors use of the street shouldn't be burdened onto the homeowner, but um, he doesn't feel it's necessary, then I can go with the tandem. Very good, thank you. Commissioner Laz? Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner. So the only is. question I have is we seem to always uh, forget what the actual motion that we're going to be making is, and I saw you taking notes. And I, I did. Have, I might not have gotten them all, so. Right. I'm going to ask you to make the motion if you're, sure, if you're, sure. you're going to make one. I do have one question, Sandra, though. Right. It, it mentioned <laughs> real quick was that this project would reduce to two the number of parcels that could potentially be rezoned, which could prove difficult in developing the small area with the commercial structure that meets the town's parking and open space requirements. I, I was, maybe I didn't read it right, but I was confused as to was this just a mention? given the fact of with this home being here that it would limit the next steps then moving yes. forward i mentioned it mostly for the applicants benefit since when they first approached us there were four parcels that potentially could have been rezoned and um, that may have been more appropriate for um, a commercial rezone um, there may be an opportunity to site some small residential scale type commercial building on the corner and get parking in an open space um, the challenge is simply noted. Of it's not foreclosed, just noted. No, okay, very good, thank you. May I address that particular point? Sure, if you wanna step up to the microphone and uh, so everyone can hear you. Thanks, um, yeah, so our, we've been working uh, with a commercial um, real estate um, agent um, in regards to those two lots on the corner and the um, sort of back of the envelope um, designs that we're drawing it. The uh, commercial zone residential has always been sort of targeted for those, those two lots, with one of the lots probably being a parking lot and the other being a um, two-story um, uh, residential zone commercial office building. So we've been able to sort of Tetris in um, that 
within the, I think it's a 40% FAR for office building? Um, it's 25% unless you add a residential residence and it's an additional 15. But those are some of the issues yeah. we haven't okay. fully worked so that's, out. So yeah, no, I appreciate your comments and the reason I wanted clarification was just as it relates to the home. Yes. So uh, if you, obviously any concerns in those things moving forward, you'll definitely want to work with the planning department and Sandra with that. But we definitely won't be making any decisions on the home based. I just want some clarification yeah. at that okay. presentation. Well, okay. I helped. All right. <laughs> Thank you, though. Thank you very much. So. And, you know, I would like to make a clarification that, mm -hmm. that wasn't in the staff report, um, and it really bolsters eliminating that second driveway cut. It's that um, single-family residential parcels are permitted one driveway rather than two, so it's out of compliance with okay. that. And it's, um, I would say it's important that we address that tonight. Very good. And so that goes back to what Commissioner Cook was referring to earlier in terms of the street parking as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Yes, please. I, uh, one small uh, little detail that yeah. may be uh, used to you is um, the dug for plywood. Um, typically, plywood comes in four by eight panels, and then uh, they have a, a plate height that looks like a nine feet on there. And they have a band, though, at the front of the house that would hide that. But what I'm getting at, if you, if you put panels up and um, there would be this continuous seam unless they're varied, mm -hmm. and it kind of um, reduces the illusion of, of a board and bat. That doesn't sound desirable, what, what you described. Yeah, so just be aware of that, that um, you may want to vary those panels or mix them up more or avoid that, that continuous seam. Good point. Thank you, Bum. Thank you very much. All right, with that being said, I believe that the motion, if I've heard you correctly, should be that we uh, make a motion to approve the design elements with a use permit approval for tandem parking in place of the one small off street parking spot. Right. That correct? Correct. Do one of you want to make that motion? <laughs> I'll make a motion to uh, approve the design elements and the use permit for the parking, the tandem parking uh, per the staff's recommendations. Thank you, Commissioner Scoggins. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Cook. All of those uh, in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. Moves forward unanimously. Good. Welcome back to <laughs> Yonkville. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Beautiful house. Thank you very much. Very excited. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Welcome. Good. Thank you very much. All right. With that, we will move to. Oh, sorry. To tell them what comes next. Or? Oh, uh, oh yeah. that was Thank our new you. rule, remember? Yeah. That's <laughs> so good. So after one. this meeting, I'll send you a notice of action that has um, the conditions of approval listed, and it'll also detail the next steps for obtaining a building permit. Okay. So you'll get Great. that from me in the mail. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I was missed one meeting, and I didn't even know that. So thank you. You need to step off a little bit. <laughs> after his job. Confident. After. All right. With that, we'll move to uh, number eight presentation and staff and board reports. Do you have a presentation and discussion? No, let's go right to um, <laughs> staff and board, board reports. Report. 9.1. Big item tonight. Yes, we have a very big um, item. Bob Tiernan here has announced his retirement at the end of this month. This will be his last meeting tonight, um, and he's going on to explore more exciting things. Good. Than all this? Statement? Relax. <laughs> no, no, it's been uh, a lot of, um, well, 12 years now, and uh, a lot of changes over these the 12 years in the ZDRB. And, uh, and they've tried different things and, you know, informal meetings and meeting around a table and, and back up to, uh, you know, a more formal setting. And now, now I guess we'll be moving back and whatever changes are in the council's uh, chambers now. But um, lots, of, uh, lots of projects under the bridge and it's been a lot of my pleasure working with all of the ZDRB uh, 
and members and uh, over time. So uh, I think we've accomplished a lot up and down Washington Street in particular, and the town's kind of been transformed. So it's I'll miss the uh, the problem solving aspect of it. It's that's fun, actually. But I'll be around. Great, you're not leaving town then. No, great. Well, that was a very inf important piece that 12 years in Yonville in the development of the town. So yeah. it's been important having you here, and you've set a good course for the future. Thank you. As a, as a newer resident, I feel like uh, it's only added you guys have only added value to the town and, and it's a great place to live we'll see and still has its charm and yet a lot to do for such a small little one mile strip of uh, mm -hmm. real estate so kudos Sam. are you completely retiring or are you going to be working elsewhere i'll be doing some um maybe consulting things but mostly retired well thank you congratulations Any, uh, we shall move on then into any discussion from staff, um, well, I'm not, commissioners I, or staff. I don't know if I mentioned it to all of you, um, but we're moving back into town hall oh, on yes. Friday. Oh, wow. We Excellent. will be closed on Friday and Monday and reopen to the public then. So next nice. time you come visit us, it'll probably be in the old like town this. hall that's all spiffed up. <laughs> wow. I mean, yeah, it'll that's be nice great. all spiffed up, but I like this is a little more casual. Yeah. I like the big Any chairs. Any good things on the horizon for ZDRB? Um, nothing that's been submitted that we are aware of. Although we've been in discussion with some owners about some things, but before it's public, no. There's a house that just was torn down. I think it's Starkey hmm. on the corner of Starkey and Washington. That was yeah. the one the we... Yeah. Did you miss them? Yeah. Weren't you on? Oh, yeah, oh, then I missed missed them. Them. Never oh, Okay. Yeah. There you go. You guys already dealt with it. Good, good for you. I was wondering when I was going to see yeah. it. We haven't seen the building permit submitted for that project, but they wanted to do um, the major work <coughs> so they could start during the winter if conditions <coughs> would avail themselves to start, which mm -hmm. means little or no rain, mm -hmm. as has been. As it has case. been. So if you don't, if you're not coming to the meeting, you don't get the package to even know what's going on. No. Pardon me? No, I get the package. Oh, I just didn't read it. Yeah. When I don't come to the meeting, oh. I don't read it. Oh, right. You there get you a go. package no matter There's what. There's the flip side. Members. There's the flip side. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very good. Hey, no, I don't read them all. But you were busy having a baby, I right? I think that's, that's probably what it was. Is this thing on? Sorry. You're calling me out like that. <laughs> you better watch out and see what happens when you step up. I know. You were a little busy. That's fine. Well, very good. Anything else? All right. Nope. Then, with no roll call, we'll uh, call this meeting to an adjournment. <laughs> All Thank right. You. Oh, All to right. our next meeting, uh, January 14th, and back in our regular spot. Thank you very much. <laughs>